Hey, Equest here bringing you a basics guide for Path of Exile. Alright, let's talk about leaks first. Uh, before you get to the this screen, which is the character selection screen, basically you have a league choice. The uh, current league is the one dead center, which is where most people are. And then there is the standard league, which is basically doesn't include the current league's content, but all the past content, and um, where your characters go to after the current league is finished. You can use that to store any items you want, or you can continue playing your game if you just want to finish the story out, and or you want to do more league content before the next one rolls out. And there's also in there solo self found as an option you can choose, which means that uh, basically you rely on yourself and yourself only and there is no one to uh, trade with. You can't trade with people. Uh, various um, the currencies in game for items. If you're picking a league, you can go ahead and decide on a character. Each character can technically do anything in the game, but due to passive tree positioning and their base stat line, they have uh, skills that they are more inclined with. For example, Templar here is a strength intelligence character, meaning that he uh, is more easily able to do spells and strength really based fighting styles. Each character has three ascensions. The Templar's ascensions are Hero Path, Inquisitor, and Guardian. Guardian is a tanky slash support style character. Now the Inquisitor is a kind of a mix of offensive styling and works with elemental. You can do spells or melee. He then works and he has some defensive measures but not much. Last thing that list we have the Hero Panth, which is all faced on spells and mana and using totem or brand skills. So what that Ascension prefers to do. Uh, next we have the Shadow. The Shadow is a Dex intelligence based character and his three ascensions are Assassination, which is a glass cannon build focused around crits. Uh, there is the Trickster, which is a more all-purpose kind of a build. And then we have the Saboteur, which is all about mines and traps. Um, this The Saboteur one in particular um, you can't do much outside of traps and mines with it, but it does specialize in them, and it's kind of unique in that the other ones don't have that much of a specialization, but this one seems really focused on it. Alright, next is the beefy Marauder. He's a strength-based character, and in this game, strength gets you uh, lots of health and... We'll get and it's easier to get armor, so physical damage reduction. And then uh, with that, I'm going to be moving this into a let's play, so I'll continue playing this character. In the let's play, I plan on just basically going through a basic build that'll let you to get through all ten acts of the game. Um, his three ascensions are the chieftain, which is a fire-based character that is tanking that it has a lot of health regeneration and will also do totems. There is the Juggernaut, which is very, is very tanky, <clears throat> but also has some offensive capabilities. And there's the Berserker. Uh, he has just, just hyper-offensive and um, has some synergies with War Cries. Next we have the Scion. The Scion is the Jack of all trades, Master of None. Her ascension is basically taking bits from every other ascension. Um, however, you cannot unlock her until you have gone through Act 3 because she's locked up in prison. Uh, she's not a class that's very friendly to beginners because um, of where she starts out in the passive tree. Uh, the passive tree, uh, I don't want you guys to be, you know, kind of 
spooked by it, but it does. It is quite massive, and but it's it's not really that complicated to uh, maneuver through once you have gone through it. And I'll go ahead and discuss it later on in the video in more detail. After the scion, we have the ranger. The ranger is a purely dex-based character. The dissensions include Deadeye, Raider, and Pathfinder. The Raider Ascension is the Ascension that is the most offensive while also being the most general usage of the three. It focuses on building up attack speed as well as um, dodge and evasion chance. While the Pathfinder is one that you would be using to frequently use potions, deal damage and poisons, and a little bit of elemental. Deadeye Ascension would be the one that is mostly used for bows and is very focused on projectile damage in general. You don't necessarily need a bow to do to do projectile damage because gems have tags in them and one of them include is projectile. On the topic of evasion and stuff like that, dex characters mainly rely on evasion to deal with damage incoming. There's ways of modifying that, but it is um, a permanent random in that there you will eventually be hit with evasion. So you need to make sure you have enough health pool so that way you can just take that one hit. However, most of the time with a high enough evasion rating, it's pretty safe. Second to last here, we have the Duelist, who was actually my first his, character. His strength I and Dex character, and his three ascensions are the Slayer, the Champion, Gladiator. The Slayer is a massive healing style tank that also has an ability that once the enemies hit 20% or lower life, it can be instantly killed. A Champion is a mixture of tankiness as well as. Um, Offensive capabilities, although he can be very uh, hyper offensive. Uh, he also has taunt skill with his attacks. One of the selections where basically it gives you, once you hit an enemy, once they are taunted to you, and then you have 100% accuracy against that enemy. Uh, lastly, in that ascension trio, we have the gladiator, which specializes in dual blades as well as bleeds. And lastly, we have the Witch. The Witch's three ascensions are Oculist, Elementalist, and Necromancer. She's a pure intellect-based character, meaning that spells are her forte. And the Elementalist is, for its namesake, able to use the base or the three elementals in the game to a greater effect. The Oculist focuses on dealing with hexes and uh, cold and chaos damage, while the Necromancer is focused more on uh, minions, pets, and ally buffing. Alright, now after going over the basics of characters and kind of what their ascensions do, let's go ahead and defenses, because after Act 5, um, defenses become pretty important. So, armor is associated with strength, these characters. Nexus Evasion and Energy Shield is for intelligence. Now, they're not strictly, you obviously have some armor or some evasion. So we, you're able to mix up your armor as you go on and play. But after that, there is also resistances to uh, ice, fire, and lightning. Those cap out at 75%. And once you get after, once you progress beyond Act 5, you generally speaking want to have those resistances max. Chaos is not something you necessarily want to go for, although it is good to have, but realistically it's kind of like a quality of life that you're going to get, and it's not something you find very commonly on armor, so you can pretty much avoid it, but if you find good gear with it, then I would suggest taking it, but not, then just don't worry about it too much. Alright, like I said, I'm going to go with the Marauder, and again after this Six video. I'm gonna go ahead and go to a uh, let's play. I'm gonna call him Mr. Tank. Taken. Okay. 
again, he's got to use his strength, so he's... And where he's in the passive tree makes him uh, really good at just survival. That's good. I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to smack him with the club. All right, I got our first skill gem. So, you know, let me talk about skills really quick. Um, other than ascensions, people build around skills, typically. This one, as you notice, is red, which means that it's a strength-based gem, although they can have additional requirements, such as, um, I think the Templar one um, starts off with strength and requires a little bit of intelligence. And because of where he's on the tree, it's not too hard to get, but some gems do require some additional things. Anyways, so this is going to be the main attack gem. It's not going to be the one that I'm going to choose. I'm going to change it later, but this is the one they give you in the beginning. And basically, you only want, generally building, you're only making one attack gem, and then other sorts of um, supporting gems. Supporting gems can be either connected to it, like see this one's got a line here, which means that it can have a connection to it, and it's going to increase the skill in some way. Or it's going to make it have more functionality. So later on in this tutorial area section, I think they give you the Ruthless Gem, which makes it every third hit. Um, being able to do um, a lot more additional damage, basically. Now, I also changed my left click here so that way it just moves me. And did that because sometimes you want to position yourself differently. You don't want to get stuck in walls. So, it's generally speaking, a few people do that. Some people do other things, but like to do, and I'm still, you know, I'm still learning the game, although I've been playing it a while. Most of the items that are going to come out of here are the very entry level set of armor. I'm not going to have too much on them. Probably won't even be rare. That's kind of what they give you in the beginning. Like in most games. Um, I don't know how people or other people like to play, but I like to clear most of the map, but I think it's a tutorial. I'm just going to go ahead and speed on through it. Now these barrels do have items in there. I just got. Um, this here is a form of currency. There are many different currencies in this game, and the currency also has uh, functionality. Like this one, you can take a upgrade a normal item to a magic item. You don't. You generally want to save them up. You don't want to do like just upgrade your very first items you get. And this one is used for identifying identifying rare items and above. Okay, so here's the support I was talking about. This one you attach it to your thing and it's linked here. Now if you look at what, my heavy strike skill, it'll have the ruthless bow information attached to it. So, and then once I actually get to the boss, I can go ahead and explain it because as soon as I level, I can actually go over the skill tree, which is what picks up most people about this game and makes them automatically want to quit. Other than the inventory management, which is something you have to to get used to. But I mean having limited inventory is kind of kind of a fun thing, kind of an annoying thing, but it's just how the game is. Um reminiscent from Diablo 2, which kind of started that a whole um items have odd shapes and you have to kind of play Tetris with it. Alright, I've leveled here. So before we fight the boss, let's look at the tree. Now, as you can see, it's massive. But what you kind of have to think about this as kind of like 
uh, a, pi, a big pi. So in general, the character typically does not move more than two squares in the pi in any direction. So for example, you realistically, you know, you have this character, but you're usually dealing with this section and this section and this section, or possibly this your current section here, this one, and this one. You know, there are builds you can do if you really want to go way over here, but it's not advised because it's kind of stretching out your points. Each level, you don't get stat points when you level. Instead, you get them by going through the tree here. So there's a lot of really basic uh, kind of things like this one's uh, maximum life and, and uh, melee damage. Um, most of the time, you want to get as much health as you can, just because later in the game, um, you often have enough damage but don't have enough life. And so, that said, I'm going to go ahead and pick here, I'm going to go through here, and then as I play through the game, go ahead and see what other choices I make uh, based on what I think is probably the best to do. Anyway, so now it's our time to get to our first boss. He's pretty, I mean, he's really easy. You can actually just face tank him, especially being as I am a this Marauder class, I have more armor and health, and so it'll actually be really easy. One thing you have to worry about in the beginning is, is typically mana management. Um, I think all of them have that problem, realistically, in the beginning. But what you can do is uh, you can just go ahead and use your potions to nothing and they'll refill in town. Let's see what we got here. Try to play. And gauntlets. Alright, so it's like I said, here's my first magic item in here. I'm going to go ahead and just scroll wisdom and see what it is. It gives me additional 11 strength. So, if you look, these, if you hover over these, when it's open, it'll tell you what each of them does. So, like I said, intelligence here gives you mana, and it also gives you energy shield. This one will give you dexterity, gives you accuracy and evasion, and strength gives you life, as well as melee physical damage. I thought it gave armor, but I guess it doesn't. Well, the point is that, is that strength base gets armor fairly easy. I mean, just kind of how the characters build. Anyways, that's uh, my tutorial. Thanks for watching.